Hi there, Marius here with the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel we do all things resuscitation, so please consider subscribing. On today's video we'll be reviewing the American Heart Association's Adult Post Cardiac Arrest Algorithm. So let's jump straight in. ACLS providers increasingly recognize that a systematic post-cardiac arrest care after ROS can improve the likelihood of patient survival with good quality of life. Studies also show that most deaths occur during the first 24 hours after resuscitation from cardiac arrest. So post-cardiac arrest care has a significant potential to reduce early mortality caused by hemodynamic instability as well as later morbidity and mortality caused by multi-organ failure and brain injury. The adult immediate post-cardiac arrest care algorithm starts with ROSC or return of spontaneous circulation. Immediately when ROSC is achieved, check if the patient is breathing. If your patient is not breathing, give one breath every six seconds. That's 10 breaths per minute. Also avoid ventilating the patient too quickly or with too much volume. We should also place an advanced airway with waveform capnography aiming for 35 to 45 millimeters mercury. We should also use the lowest inspired oxygen concentration that will maintain atrial oxyhemoglobin saturation between 92 to 98. Check the pulse and blood pressure. If the systolic blood pressure is below 90 millimeters mercury or you have a mean arterial pressure below 65, consider an IV if not previously established and start a fluid bolus of 1 to 2 liters of normal saline or ringus lactate. If the patient appears to be unresponsive and does not respond to verbal commands or instructions, consider giving cold fluids to start inducing targeted temperature management or TTM. TTM is the only intervention that has been demonstrated to improve neurological recovery after cardiac arrest. The optimal duration of TTM is at least 24 hours. We should also monitor the vitals closely and listen to the patient's lungs regularly as we do not want to overload the patient with fluids. The current recommendation for TTM in the pre-hospital setting is not to routinely cool patients after ROSC with rapid infusion of cold IV fluids. Current evidence indicates no direct outcome benefit for these interventions and IV fluid administration in the pre-hospital setting may increase pulmonary edema and re-arrest. We don't yet know whether different methods or devices for temperature control outside of the hospital are beneficial. From a medication perspective, we can consider the following medications. Norepinephrine 0.1 to 0.5 mics per kg per minute. Our aim again is to achieve a minimum blood pressure of 90 millimeters mercury or a MAP greater than 65. Epinephrine infusion 2 to 10 mics per minute. IV infusion again 90 millimeters mercury or a MAP of 65 or dopamine starting at 5 to 20 mics per kg per minute to maintain that blood pressure of 90 and a MAP of 65. We should not forget the importance of a 12 lead ECG as soon as possible to identify patients with a possible STEMI who might require a PCI. Other consideration, don't forget your HSNTs or your reversible causes that persist post return of spontaneous circulation. We can think about a brain CT, EEG. It's also reasonable to perform neuroprognostication at a minimum of 72 hours after 
normophermia. For more information, please review the 2020 American Heart Association guidelines and I've linked information in the description below. Benefited from this video, please like the video, subscribe and smash that notification bell. We'll see you in the next video. Have an awesome day.